Okay, so I'm recording here. We're discussing the Universal Power Supply C2000 series board controlling a system for power electronics, a universal power supply that can function for anything from a welder to a plasma cutter, induction furnace. The very interesting part here is for the audience is that when we use a controller, we can make the same power electronics, for example, in one function work as a welder. So say we have a power a production run, we're using a lot of welders, we're welding things. But next day, we want to use the induction furnace. Well, we can repurpose those same same welders to function not like welders, but as the induction furnace, which is consistent with our radical modularity where we can have a limited amount of equipment perform different functions. That's the beauty of the modular approach of uh, construction set approach. Okay, so what what's missing from that, Paul? Um, the uh, modulator is the same mm -hmm. for those functions. Yep. But the power stage is different. A welder will have a slightly different power supply than a uh, plasma cutter and the induction furnace. In particular, induction furnace will be quite different. So the modulator is the same, but it has different software in it. Okay, okay. So it's not, we're not specifically repurposing those welders. We are using different power, power boards. Yes. What all is going to be the same in the different cases? So you've got the modulator, in other words, the brain. Yeah. Uh, that. The, uh, everything down to the gate driver logic is the same. That's all the modulator does. Mm-hmm. Much later, also drives the user interface. Yep. Okay. Um, the power stage is its purpose in life is to match the given load to the to the power line. It matches the impedance of the load, and it transforms from the AC to DC. Okay. Um, and the explicit things that it can control are different in the modulator pin amp. Mm hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not as, as good as I thought, but okay. This is. Um, we do have a universal controller and therefore the concept is that it'll be less well just the the power elements for a function like say a plasma cutter versus a welder how much similarity do they have and is it actually possible to create a power stage that's multi-purpose too or that's just um. not possible Yeah. Makes sense to. Is everything else the same before that? Within limitations, yes. So, would it make sense to try to divide those power modules? Like, for example, okay, here we just have. Uh, well, I mean, go down and. So, you have things like transformers, you have IGBTs sections and things like that is it possible to modularize th this even further so that we can plug and play 
because if, for example, the the welder or the induction furnace has IGBTs, would it makes it would be possible to modularize such that you can reuse those? Um, I would say probably not in practice. Mm -hmm. In theory, yes, but in practice, no. Uh huh. Um, the problem is that the gate drive for IGBTs and for MOSFETs mm -hmm. is a very high bandwidth signal. It has rise times in the order of um, 50 to 100 nanoseconds at quite high current, several amps of current at uh, 10 nanosecond or 100 nanosecond rise time. And those signals have to be treated very carefully and over very short distances. Mm -hmm. If you try and um, run a gate drive signal more than a few inches in an impedance controlled environment, um, you'll have expect serious problems. Mm -hmm. I see. Go ahead. Yeah. So you couldn't do a modular driver? Um. Well, that's basically the function of the uh, power stage, is to transform one power gate drive signals from the modulator mm -hmm. into high power signals that drive the ICPTs. So the ICPTs are quite physically large and expensive. Mm -hmm. And um, they require very carefully done gate drives. I expect to. S I I would expect to have to revise the board at least once or twice to get it right. Yeah. Okay, so we can think about then. Um, in terms of scalability, would we be able to achieve scalability then? If we cannot get the multifunctionality, can we get scalability by virtue of multiplying the driver slash power stage elements? Like if you want 10 kilowatts, you have one stage. If you want 20 kilowatts, you have two of those. Would that be feasible? Um, you're breaking up. I had a little difficulty understanding you. Okay. Um, if we are trying to scale, like we want different power applications, like a 10 kilowatt small induction furnace supply, or you want 100 kilowatts, um, will it be practical to scale that? Or we just want to use a dedicated driver for a larger dedicated power element? Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's, it's, um, the difficulty comes in the mechanical fabrication of it. The gate drive signals are so high bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at distances of two or three inches maximum and trying to cram mm -hmm. all the ICBTs and their associated heat sinks. Yeah. Um, the ICBTs will be sitting on 
like quick massive aluminum heat sinks. Mm -hmm. And trying to reuse the driver part of that would, I think, be a very tough challenge. Yeah. Yep. Overall, how much how much sense does it make to have so if we take on this modular approach, if we focus on the modularity, does it make a lot of sense then to have uh okay, let's talk about say the cost. So the uh, let's say the the universal controller, universal modulator. How much cost is embodied in that? About a hundred dollars. And is that for if you had a dedicated circuit or this multi-purpose circuit? That's a multi-purpose modulator. Mm -hmm. And a dedicated modulator would be say how much? maybe eighty dollars or so so we are saving if we if we have that modulator applied to many different elements then we do save on infrastructure now what yes. would be a okay so what would be a typical cost of a welder power supply for 10 kilowatts for 10 kilowatts yeah a hard answer? I would think one to two thousand dollars. Okay. And is that um, the kind of things you can get from China? Is that the price range for a 10 kilowatt welder? If you get one from China, it would be about a thousand. I would think a thousand to two thousand. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible to compete on price. Okay. Um. Okay. Does that thousand or so include you're talking about just the power supply or the gun and everything else and the just the power supply. Just the power supply, okay. Um Yeah, I mean you can get combination machines. Um, yeah, I mean they're gonna be. Um, probably around a thousand bucks, under a thousand dollars. Like for example, a seventy amp welder, not seventy amp plasma cutter, would be around a thousand dollars. And those, yeah, even a combination machine. Um, okay, what are, th when you think about this approach that we want to take, which is doing the multi-purpose controller, um, the main idea here would be that, I mean, like for example, say something breaks within the power supply itself, would that typically be fixable if we build our own power supply? like? be say like a power stage that goes out or I mean uh, yes it would be fixable mm -hmm. so are we likely to get the lifetime 
design advantage from going with this modular open source design? Yeah, lifetime design. In other words, you can maintain it. Like if something burns out, you can actually replace it. I would think it's quite maintainable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, I've seen welders grow up. And um, they can do a remarkable amount of damage when they explode. And this is for for solid state welders? Yeah. Inverter welders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um in a th say the thousand dollar ten kilowatt cost, what what would be the main component price? What's the most expensive part in there? I think two thousand is a better price than a thousand. Mm-hmm. Two hundred a piece, and how many would we need for the welder application? Four. Mm-hmm. And for three phase, you would need six of them, or? Pardon. And how many would you need for a three phase welder? Um, I was thinking as a single phase welder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is the design of a of a three phase welder significantly different? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And would that need six of the IGBTs or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then do the IGBTs scale favorably in size, like for example hundred kilowatt IGBTs, those are accessible? Mm -hmm. But in this case, like say, so say we had, um, okay, so for the flexibility of the system that we would design, if you have two of the 10 kilowatt power supplies, we'd be able to stack them by the current current limiting functionality. Yes. Which would be, uh, I guess, the advantage we get altogether is just the flexibility we get from this this entire infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, can we maybe discuss? So, when we talk about the C two thousand controller and how would you connect? Like, what are the connections to the welder power supply? What What are all the different gate, different uh, wires that would go into? Those wires are on slide fifteen. Okay. Gate one A, one B, two A, two, three, four, five, six. So six gates and how many but we would use use how many gates? Just four? Um for a single phase you just four. Okay. Um so you got four gates. Uh what else? So um, coming back from the board are some analog signals for voltages and up to four currents. Okay. So it's monitoring the input voltage and the output voltage and the output current.
input and output voltage, input and output current. Just the, just the output current. Output current. And is that doing that for each of the IGBTs? No. Um, it's measuring the input voltage is common across all the IGBTs, and so is the output current. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, maybe we we should get into new slide and then let's look at the welder application. So welder application, you got. So let's uh, write down all those things. So you got four gate drives, and those are okay. So let's talk about those for a second. So. So you got your microcontroller unit, it's got four fast signals, and these are how fast? 100 megahertz. And it's through this 60-pin this connector? Yes. Okay. That's why there's so many grounds on it. So that um, it's an impedance control. Can you explain the concept to the audience of what impedance control is? Um, the impedance of a uh, printed circuit board for a nice sized trace at these power levels is around 100, 120 ohms. Mm -hmm. And you want maintain that from the source of the signal to the end of the signal to where it arrives. Um, otherwise you'll get reflections which will either slow the rise time or Okay, so we've got a um, little diagram of the MCU, you've got four fast connections, four fast pins to the IGBTs. Okay, you've got feedback on, so going back into it, you got an analog signal, which you're picking up, actually, like, say, if it's a welder, it would be at the gun? Um, it would be at the uh, output, it would be transformer. Mm -hmm. After rectifiers. Um, this is assuming DC welding? Yes. Uh, so do we, do we want DC and AC welding? AC welding would be a problem. Mm-hmm. 
Because this is not what the circuit is set up to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an advantage to AC welding? Like, what's what's the difference between DC and AC? Um, DC welding gives a better quality weld. Um, with an AC weld, the power is going through zero every cycle, mm -hmm. and that shows up in the world as a potential spot for an inclusion to grow. For what? For an inclusion. Inclusion. Uh, what's an inclusion? Oh, a place where there's Dirt? the world is slightly thinner or mm -hmm. slightly occluded by some oxide. Yeah. Because it wasn't hot enough at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Why do people use AC welding? Cheap. Oh. Very cheap. So an AC welder would be... Um, like the Miller Matic has... Does that have um, AC and DC or that's just AC? Just AC. When it's got transformers, so the, are you familiar with the Millermatic 200? Mm -hmm. That's AC. I thought it says DC on the outputs there. I don't know that. I'm not that familiar with the internals of the things. I've just seen them. Uh huh. Uh, let's see, Millermatic 200. Yeah, so the transformer, i.e. the transformer welders, they're just cheap, and they, do they just um, run at the same frequency as the, as the grid? As the line. As the so line. The 60 hertz. Yeah. And that's like the super easy way to make it. Yes. Yep. Here we're going, we're chopping up a signal. And then, can you describe the pathway, like uh, basically the signal pathway for the welder that we're doing for a DC welder? Can that me again? Just say that again. Yeah. Uh, can you describe the pathway, like how the signals, uh, basically how we're going from uh, in our welder here, DC welder? We're starting with grid AC, and then what yeah. happens? In the bridge, in the bridge modulator, to high frequency AC around uh, 20 kilohertz, and then rectify that to DC. Uh, the rectification step happens how? And that, does that also, like, if you have that, let's see, the... the just, will you excuse me for a moment? Uh-huh. Okay. I am back. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, which also do the smoothing... Let's see how does if you have a fast oscillating frequency, the smooth like at the end of the day it's a smooth it looks like a smooth signal, right? Yes. And the smoothness is obtained how? There's choke on the 
the output of the DC after the rectifiers. Choke, you call it? Yeah. An inductor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So MCU gives. So the signals were uh, from the MCU. Where's the display in the system? Is it um, the MCU has a display? Connected to the uh, C2000. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's do a little display connected there. So I'm on page 20. So we've got a little display. Um, would you see a particular IGBT power range which is favorable to do here because the price of the overall welder is really good for the the power like the power range or like would it, would a 10 kilohertz 10 kilowatt be um, the value to go for um, as I said before I feel a lot more comfortable with starting with a lower power welder right um, because it's going to blow up. Yeah. Right. So, 10 kilowatt eventually. And the first one would be how much? Around two and a half or three. Distance at 2.5. 150 to 200 amp. That gets us 250 to 300? 150 to 200. 150 to 200 amps at at what like uh, 20 20 volts or something or 25 volts. Mm -hmm. What's the guideline for the voltage at which you want the welder to operate? And that's a uh, the trade-off there is like for example if you had higher voltage it would wouldn't give you current is more important than welding right yes therefore the voltage would be you'd be throwing away power is that yes mm -hmm. yeah and you don't want to go too low because it would be very hard to maintain a short arc I see. Does that apply also to robotic welding? Or you can go lower? Yeah. Because otherwise you would simply be losing the arc. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So at the two two point five to three kilowatt range, like let's see, is there? Can we find a an IGBT that works for that? Let's see. Do you have a particular IGBT that would work? Work? No, I don't have a particular IGBT in mind yet. Uh huh. And these would be rated for like 150 to 200 amps. Yeah. Let's see. I'm looking at 150 amp ones. They look like 80 dollars. Let's say. Continuous current of 150 amps. Um, what is the main figure of merit there to like the rise times? Or um, there's a trade 
started off in LGBTs on geek sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't checked out an LGBT to use yet. I'm still uh, looking at IR and I exist. Mm-hmm. And possibly ST components of the major suppliers. Mm-hmm. And those in particular because? I've worked with them before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, um, once you would do the 2.5 to 3 kilowatt range, the learning from that applies, would the circuit be largely identical? at the higher? Yes. It'd have bigger gate drivers mm -hmm. and a bigger gate drive transformer. But the um, basic machine would look very similar except that it would have much bigger heat sinks. Yeah. Um, the important thing is that the software would be almost the same. Would the pins, the connection to the driver, be identical, or...? Yes. Okay. Would it just about all the connections be identical, or there's...? They'd be pretty well the same. That's good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um... Does 10 kilowatt imply that we're going to have 600 to 800 amps? Yes. That's pretty chunky. <laughs> That's a big welder. Yeah. That's interesting. Is, is, are the uh, transformer welders, are they much, they're more inefficient? Yes. What kind of efficiency are uh, transformer welders? Oh, around 60. Whereas these ones are, what, 95? IGBT welders? Um, I would say 80. 80? Mm -hmm. You're going through two stages of rectification and a much later stage. Yeah. Yeah. The mod the Modulator at power, at high power, right? The switching phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So we talked about there's four signals going to IGBTs. There's one feedback on the voltage after the... Um, let's see, where was that voltage? At the output of the... Where was the voltage measured at? Output of transformers after the rectifiers. Yeah. Mm hmm And the other feedback was voltage... On the input. On the input. Um, Um, so if we're looking at the input, are we looking basically there the feedback from how you load down the power supply? Yes. 
and basically the logic within the code will have to address basically if you load it down then let go throttle back yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and is that something we're gonna have to program explicitly uh, um, basically the MCU has no yeah, it has no no brains until you program it, right? So we're going to give all those specific instructions how to do that in the code, right? Yeah. But using libraries that already exist. Yeah, is that is that correct those libraries? Yes. Mhm. Mm okay. Um Is there a so the logic um is that logic well defined and understood, or are there a yeah. lot of mm -hmm. reasonably well, not to a hundred percent though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so further, so the the power stage, the there's going to be three leads go into it with power, right? Um, let's just do that. Three leads for the power connection. And are we looking at those being like um, screw down terminals? Or have we? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, there's MCU. Can look at it as this. 